What's up guys, this is Zero, and we're doing another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Um, previously, we had launched a mission to redirect an asteroid, which we successfully did. However, we ran out of fuel, and our Kerbals are now stranded on the asteroid. Uh, so our mission here is to get that back. We also have another agenda, which we are now launching now. If you have noticed, I installed the beautification mod for Kerbal Space Program, so we added lovely volumetric clouds, which actually looks pretty decent. Um, I do have a complaint with how it looks right there on the horizon. It's kind of dark and gray and not as fluffy and bright as I would have liked it to be. Um, but I'm pretty sure we can change that with some kind of settings or at least editing the texture file, we can make it brighter. Uh, we can also increase the density and whatnot with the config file, which is pretty cool. So just beginning our gravity turn, if you notice, I launched from the airplane uh, runway thing. It actually makes it kind of easier for me to navigate and do a polar orbit, which is what our asteroid is currently in, which makes my life a little easier. So I just slapped a bunch of solid fuel boosters and external rocket things just to get it up there because I didn't really care about fuel consumption. I just wanted to get this thing into space. I'll tell you what it is in a minute as soon as we get into orbit. But... Um, Beautification mod, really easy to install, pretty awesome. I also got rid of all the flags that came with the Kerbal Space Program, except for the retro one, which I actually like a lot. And I made my own, which is some spin off of the NASA one. It just says zero on it, and it's black, and it looks pretty awesome. Maybe I'll add it in the corner of the thumbnail or something, just so you guys can see a better picture of it. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'm sure you'll see it at some point. But this is where the beautification mod really shines. It looks amazing from orbit. So really excited about that. It makes it actually look and feel like a real planet. Hopefully in the 1.0 release, um, Squad actually adds that to the game. It adds so much to it and just makes it look really planet-like. So super awesome. But now that we're in orbit, um, I pretty much keep this stage all the way to the rendezvous with the vehicle because it's just got so much fuel on it. At some point, I might decrease the orbit of it. It's kind of, kind of elliptical, kind of really kind of a pain in the ass. So maybe in the next mission, we'll add a few more parts to it and we'll decrease its orbit because it's kind of, kind of out there. It uses a lot more fuel, kind of a pain in the ass to rendezvous with. But, you know, I do it like a pro, of course. <laughs> Not always, but this one actually turned out really well. I was kind of happy with how it, how it worked out. Pretty easy to set the nodes, too. I just adjust it so we have a very similar orbit. Just like any other rendezvous, it's just polar. So maybe this camera looks a little different. But here, we are adding a cockpit to our asteroid, which may give you an idea of what I'm actually going to do with it. Yes, we're going to make the asteroid a plane and try to fly it in Kerbin atmosphere. It's going to fail horribly for sure, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Right now, I'm adding the cockpit, like I said, so we're just going to slap that on there. Slap some wings on it, some control surfaces, a bunch of reaction wheels, and hopefully that'll give us some control over the asteroid. Because as it is, reaction wheels are super OP in this game. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to try to... I don't think we're going to try to land it. I really don't see being able to put landing gear on it very well. But it's a rock. It's not going to get destroyed. It's just going to hit the ground. Or maybe not. Well, maybe it'll fly. Who knows? Um, but I definitely want to give it a shot. I'm sure someone's already done it. But this is going to be my little endeavor for the next couple of Kerbal Space Program episodes. So, yeah, definitely going to do that. So... Just kind of sped up a little bit. I just basically made the whole thing, so no matter what, it's going to end up at 10 minutes anyway. So some things are sped up at like 25%, or some of them are even 50 to uh, even more. So whichever it is, we'll figure it out. Polar orbits always do look pretty cool, not going to lie. So here we go. Just cut to another clip because I didn't really want to do all that nonsense. It's kind of boring. This is me making my intercept with the asteroid pretty far away 10 kilometers but i was like i am not gonna do that again i'm gonna fly straight towards it and get my intercept 
because I know it's, it'll work. So just burning straight towards it. Going to fast forward a little bit. Here we go. Rock 2. One point, blah, blah, blah. Nice and close. Using my nuclear engines to the best of their ability, making life really, very easy. I don't think doing it without nuclear engines would be a pain in the ass. However, I probably could have done it with the fuel I had. Um, for whatever reason, spinning madly out of control, probably something very similar to the problems that we had with the now with random rotations. <laughs> so every time I fast forward it, it should have stopped the rotation on it. However, it just kicked back in again. So screw it, whatever. Um, oh, so I guess I just immediately skipped the whole docking process. And we skipped right to the landing. So I had transferred fuel. I landed it. We'll show you in another episode. Don't worry about it. So I docked with the thing. I transferred all of the fuel over to this one. These are, you know, Darlo and Bob Kerman. These are the guys that were stuck on the asteroid. So there's a new crew on the asteroid now, and they're going to be the ones piloting it down into Caribbean atmosphere. These guys are going home. They did great. They redirected it. Super long mission for them, so finally going to get to go home. However, when I thought about it, I didn't actually put <laughs> parachutes on this at all. So I was like, whatever. I'm doing it. We're going to land on the South Pole. Totally going to do it with just nuclear engines. I think that's a two meter tank, two and a half meter tank, whatever. So we're going to try to land this thing with um, nuclear engines. Uh, it's a lot easier to land on land as opposed to water. Water just destroys everything. So we say, screw that. Get our lovely, lovely re-entry effects. Going to land right in the South Pole. So decent amount of light no matter where we are. So pretty, pretty sweet. So we can actually see what's going on. Blast those engines nice and early because God knows this is going to take forever to slow down with nuclear engines because their blast is awful, but their efficiency is amazing. So you see how little amount of fuel we have. I think it's around something like 150 units, so very, very little in terms of fuel, but since they're so efficient, they don't use it up nearly as quickly. So I was able to burn from almost 16,000 feet or something like that. You'll see right at the end, I'm like nearly out of fuel. All right, there, there we go. Liquid fuel, 213. And going down, overheating a little bit, but whatever, we'll be fine. It's really kind of hard to tell where the ground is at this point because the cloud cover, and it's so white, it's kind of hard to tell because not we got our thrusters going, there's smoke going everywhere. Can't really tell where we're landing, but clearly it looks like frozen tundra for sure. Um, but it looks flat enough, so maybe it's at sea level, so it looks like 800 feet off the ground. Getting closer, 42 meters a second. Oh, uh, here we go, 600 meters, 550, ah, uh, we're getting there. Slowly, very slowly slowing down with, <laughs> with no parachutes. Oh, God, it's getting closer. There's a ground, I can see it. No one's uh, 50 units of fuel, and clunk. <laughs> Literally the best landing ever. It just got rid of the engines and the side things. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, got the lights on. Just gonna roll it around because I can't get the Kerbal out. Unfortunately, he's stuck inside because it's obstructed. Just kind of lame. IVA obstructed, can't exit. So I literally just start rolling it around until and spamming the IVA button until, or no, I'm sorry, EVA button until it lets me out. Oh, you get to see the flag. Awesome. I forgot about that. So roll it over. Roll, roll, spam, roll. EVA, roll it around, go, 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 go. And boop, ah, and there he goes, he pops out. Now he's getting crushed by his own vehicle, lovely. Uh, I think this is Durlo, I don't remember. Yeah, Durlo, let's do this, plant flag. Here we go. And it's the retro one, yay. It wasn't my one, the only time my new one's on there is with the new, uh, what do you call it, landed it with the new mission. The new mission has the new flag, but the old mission has the retro one. So landed it. Who needs para para um parachute para um parachute. perfect. Okay, done. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Kerbal Space Program, and we will see you guys in the next episode.